What is up, everybody? I hope your January is starting well. This is such a fun year. 2019, I'm looking forward to some really big things, both in my business and in your businesses, as I've heard a lot of you are doing really fun things for 2019 and planning lots of cool stuff. Ironically for me, and we'll talk about this in an episode upcoming, but I am kind of taking a step back and going more lean. And as far as, you know, I've been in the growth mindset for so long, and now I'm kind of you know, we built the boat and now it's time to sail. And I, I want to, you know, not rest on my laurels by any means, but we want to see where this can go. We want to, and Ryan will actually get into this a little bit in the episode. We want to save a little bit more. We want to actually care about retirement. Like I, I started a retirement account over the holiday break, finally at 29. And, you know, we're going to try and get into that and just see what we can do you know, in thinking long term. And so a lot of my episodes are about that. And I know that that is important to me and important to a lot of you. So uh, today we're talking to Ryan Brenizer, who is one of my absolute heroes. And I'll try not to say that too often, but he is just one of the guys. I saw him in person at workshop in New York City. And he's just the real deal. He's a great guy. He's been in the business for such a long time. He shot more weddings than probably all of us combined. And he's also shot you know, photojournalism and news and all these things that are really, really useful. And then he combined with another photographer that he married and it's, it's just lots of experience. And he has a good, good take on what it takes to be, you know, long lasting in this industry that is fleeting and social media makes things feel like weddings only happen for a second. And he's just got so much experience. And I absolutely love that. He's one of those guys where it's, I think it's his quote. And he says, you know, I love weddings because it's not just the first or the last photo that matters, you know, the random 500th photo of you'll take that day also matters. And that's really, really cool. It's going to matter. Every photo matters on wedding day. And I love that. I love that about him. He's one of those people that preaches that. And so today we're talking with Ryan about how to last long in this industry, things to look out for. What can you do to prepare now that, you know, maybe it only takes a, a little percentage of your effort now that will save you a lot of heartache and effort later or in the future. So without any further ado, here's Ryan Brenizer. Ryan, what's your uh, what's your life like right now in 2019, man? <laughs> oh boy. Um, well, if you, I, I think the the actual moment right now is a is a great macrocosm because um, again, you're gonna uh, you're gonna hear a lot of uh, interference in and out uh, over the course of this interview because um, I am here. I'm actually just on headphones so that I can wander around to the, the quietest area because. Uh, there's five people uh, in my uh, apartment right now, and they're all, um, Tatiana is devoted to work, but we're all also devoted to the job of parenting our 16-month-old son, Gavin, who has uh, had a stomach virus over the past week. So the incredibly difficult job of parenting has turned into something that is entirely next level. Um, we are uh, we're taking him to the doctors in about an hour-ish. Um, so... So that is all preparing. So you will hear um, some of the background sounds of our <laughs> of our daily life, everything from children's songs to hand washing to yeah, him screaming when we try to put on pants. And so um, that that really, is, you know, in a way, is, is a lot of my cosm of, of where we are, um, even in the business, because of course our business and our life are are deeply, deeply, deeply intertwined. Um, we. Um, our life has changed so much and our life always informs our work, um, especially when what we work in is, uh, and I, I've always seen basically like the most interesting part uh, to me of what we do as wedding photographers is kind of telling this little slice of a story of the American family and, and also, um, and I can talk more about this later, but about the role of friendships and, and celebration, um, which is a, which is, uh, there's a lot of important angles to and something that in a way is unique. Um, one of the things that might be unique about wedding photography is in, even as opposed to other ways that you can explore the, the family, which, which is also something that we're getting into, um, uh, from, you know, things like family photography, portraiture, family photojournalism, 
Um, and so, so with that, you know, being something that is, that is all consuming for us, um, and you know, now having been through the process, not only of being married uh, and having three different weddings to each other and learning the lessons from what it is like to be on the other side, um, but then to, to go through the, the really transformative, uh, you know, thing of having a, a having and raising a child, and, and um, then uh, it puts us in a, in a different frame of mind, um, not only for ourselves, but to see things from the perspective of the people who we're really, really, really shooting for, who is our, our primary audience uh, when we shoot weddings, which is not, certainly not the internet, um, and not even in a way the couple, um, but the couple five to 10 years later uh, when they're looking back on their photos. That is the, um, you know, how do we make that experience for them um, as deep, as relevant, as awesome, as, you know, as wonderful as possible um, because, you know, that's the thing that whenever we talk about, you know, wedding photography being something that's actually important and not just, you know, uh, fun and, and, you know, uh, taking interesting kinds of pictures, but like actually important and relevant. Um, it's, it's because of that. It's because of the, the last experience. Um, and <laughs> there's a lot of surprises. Including, I mean, uh, you know, especially like how do you make wedding photography important Years later, when you know what, uh, years later in your day to day experience, you realize like the the stuff of the wedding itself was really not important. <laughs> was um, uh, you know, if you think you know, you're kind of like, oh, I don't, I don't know if, how important this is. Once you're in it, years later, and you're looking at the perspective of of making a relationship and making your life and, and progressing forward, and especially if you if you have a child. Um, then you're like, well, a lot of that stuff was definitely not important, but there is, there's a lot of stuff that <laughs> is, um, in particularly the relationships, um, you know, and the, and the celebration of that because it turns into a whole, a whole different kind of thing. Um, so we're, whether we're forced to or not, we're, we're, I, I've kind of been exploring in a, you know, kind of a, a deep, almost almost meta level um because of course you know a lot of the um when you think about you know having been a wedding photographer now for, for well over a decade uh and you know photographer of other kinds before that you know we've we've had this, these conversations about lenses and apertures and, and lighting and then you know like years and years and years and, and that is always interesting um but i you know thinking now uh, primarily about things that are not, not so obvious if you're just looking in from the outside because it's, it's kind of deep and meta and really um, directly aimed at and related to the inner experiences of our clients. Um, it, it's almost explicitly like not for the people listening uh, uh, today. And, and so um, because you're strangers, you know, you don't, you don't know the people in our photos. And, and so it's, it's thinking, how, you know, how do we make that experience deeper? Um, and at the same time, also, of course, how do we maintain uh, a business on different levels where, you know, where you, you don't actually, uh, you know, you, you make the money by selling to the next client. So you do make the money by selling to people who don't know the people in the photos. And of course, um, mm. The, the, the part, whatever part of us is public facing, the, the part of me right now that is talking on a podcast that is, is giving uh, a workshop or a lecture, um, you know, that's, that is, um, you know, sort of next level where you, you have to be, uh, outwardly focused, um, on the things that would be interesting, even if you, um, don't know the people and, and maybe even if you don't, if you don't particularly care about weddings, right? Like, and you just want to, do something really interesting with photography. So um, we've um, that aspect. There was a, a time in my life when I was really, really focused on that. Um, you know, in the past few years, uh, turned away from that to kind of get into the, the, the inner and deeper experience and in my life and in our work. And so, and there's always I think it kind of works like a sine wave. Um, you know, uh, having now focused so much on that. Um, where I think in 2019 we'll be trying to find a balance and to, to be like, you know, uh, just for the fun and joy of kind of doing really interesting things with photography, you know, where can I, how can I in my life and business 
um, carve out time to, to do that stuff that is kind of fun, maybe flashy or literally or not, um, in conjunction with also kind of delving deeper into telling stories of family, um, which for us is like is something that is so really, really interesting and compelling and, um, and really in, and important. Um, you know, so that's, that is where I am in a lot of different ways. I love it. I love it. So for some of the people who, you know, may not know who you are, you know, and I want to kind of fill in some of the gaps just from what you just said. When did you start, you know, shooting weddings? And then I know you were a photographer for a certain amount of time before then. Give me kind of the the backstory on just you. And then maybe we can fast forward to now where you and Tatiana shoot together. Yeah. So, um, you know, a million years ago, uh, I, you know, I, I started, yeah, I mean, actually, we were talking about this in the in the, the dead space before, but um, ever, like things progress so quickly uh, um, once you intersect with the world of technology and and uh, brands and how things come in and out, and and so um, digital photography makes everyone feel old because of how quickly things could change for a while and uh, yeah, that's, and so. Um, all, all I need to say is that I began uh, photography as part of uh, my work with newspapers, and that says it all because one is a newspaper. Um, but um, yeah, I began um, is it more than 20 years, almost 20 years uh, ago, and um, as a writer, editor of newspapers, and uh, stumbled when you work for, for smaller entities, you kind of do everything, including photography. Um, I was, and because I was in journalism, I came early into the world of digital photography. Um, you know, we closed our dark room back when people thought that was an insane thing to do. Um, and I really took to that because I'd always, I always really liked photography, but, um, the, the workflows of, uh, and archiving and all, and, you know, and all the other, messy stuff of film um i was not so great at i'm i'm um, i'm very ocd in the digital world and the exact opposite in the physical world and and so you know for example my um i won a statewide award for um coverage of the clintons um in in, you know 18 years ago 19 years 18 and a half years ago um in 2000 um, you will never see those photos because I don't have those photos because they lost the negatives. <laughs> so uh, as soon as I, you know, it's like, Ooh, okay. I can just like take a camera and shoot it and like try stuff. And it's not costing me money every time I, think, you know, all the stuff that everyone now has been through. Um, I just got into, you know, a little bit earlier and we really, that really took off. Um, and so I was kind of lucky to get into, um, some of the proto spaces of both digital photography and, and also this world of social media when it was becoming something um, with, you know, things like Flickr um, and learned, you know, not, not only do they give a lot of energy, but I also learned, you know, early on, I got a, a taste of some of the, um, the things about social media that were problematic. Um, and, you know, initially to, how it intersected with, with art and how it intersected with, um, you know, the things that you love versus whatever the things that the sort of public hive mind loves. Um, and, um, yeah, I, I, I got a taste of that and, and, and I kind of saw the red flags, um, early enough, uh, that, you know, now, like now that's the stuff that everyone is discovering. It's like, Oh my gosh, there's, there's, there's a, you know, um, there's a lot of ways of using social media that makes you less happy. Um, there's a lot of ways, you know, makes you, you know, angry and sad and, and uh, filled with envy and, you know, um, and so, so now people know that. And I was, I was at least able to, um, to see that when it was a lot, you know, when everything was a lot simpler when, you know, uh, back in the days of, of, uh, web 2.0 um and, and and all that um but that's where i was when when i started shooting weddings um and it you know really was this period of, of great energy and, and excitement and um but right away i was you know so uh, like weddings themselves clicked with me i think the thing that has really propelled me forward and, and kept me going through the years is that like I loved weddings um, when I was a kid. I loved weddings 
uh, when I started shooting weddings, I, you know, uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of weddings later, I still love weddings. Uh, you know, be a wedding tomorrow. I'm super excited. Um, and you know, again, like that is something that is, that's the secret weapon is the things that we've done. And some of it is just, um, in, in my nature, but, um, some of it is the things that we've done, you know, over the years that like really, truly, um, you know, I'm like, Oh, wedding tomorrow. Awesome. Like, you know, I can't wait. Um, and so, so yeah. And, and, you know, in between, we you know, obviously there's, there's a lot of stuff that if you're even, you know, passingly familiar, um, we've passed through, you know, I, um, you know, been in a method and, you know, uh, did a lot of, a lot of tricks and, and shot a lot, a lot, a lot of weddings. Um, <clears throat> and in addition to, um, you know, continuing some of the corporate work, you know, still like getting to photograph presidents and, and you know, things like that and some of my own personal time. Um, and, you know, the, you know, the thing is that our, this is all kind of, you know, continued apace, um, and in ways, you know, kind of, in ways, it's been a very steady train, um, with, for, for good and bad from a lot of various perspectives. Um, but, you know, for me, you know, I found something that I love doing. You know, I was lucky to stumble into something that I, that I really, really loved, which kept me going along this path. Um, also, you know, kept me off of a lot of the, the other paths that, you know, that, people have tended to take, um, which, you know, for, for good or bad, you know, I like never really made anything to sell to people because I was like, well, I don't really sit around and make things, you know, so it, it doesn't, uh, you know, I, I don't put together, you know, I have good ideas, but I'm not going to like build a new belt or something. And, and so, um, you know, so our, 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 our basic career path is in ways, um, hasn't changed as much as you know you would think of you know over the course of uh, 15 years um but our our lives and, and even ourselves in so many ways uh have changed dramatically mm. yeah so you're one of the guys that when i think of photography you know for me it was you're one of the first people's photos who i saw that i was like oh wedding photography can be cool um and you and susan stripling and cliff Motner. You guys are the ones that I think, you know, you're, uh, you, we say you're still around, obviously, but, but like, <laughs> you're not that old, Ryan. Um, you guys aren't that yeah. old, but it's one of those things no, where, yeah, and... yeah, it's just, um, you yeah. guys are around, but you're, um, you're still, you know, I, I, I view it as like, you're still like in it, you know, you're not relying on, um, it doesn't seem like you, people would assume that anybody with a K next to their following or something like that, these kind of like vanity numbers that, you'd be relying on some sort of celebrity to help you get through certain things or, you know, the trials of like being older or more experienced. And I heard somebody say, um, Tony Hoffer, like he, one of his fears was that he was worried his clients wouldn't get his jokes anymore. Uh, <laughs> and I think about that and like, what do you think now, now that you've shot weddings for so long, you know, for people listening to this and, and even myself, you know, I've only shot weddings for seven years, which for some people still seems like a long time. Uh, you know, but for you, you, you guys have shot for so much longer. What do you think is like one of your keys to success? You know, even just little tiny bits. Like I know you're a huge fan of fitness or maybe not a fan, but at least you do it. I see it on the Apple watch all the time. <laughs> yeah. You know, you switch to Sony, which is lighter and easier on your back. Like, um, yeah. what have been some other things that you learned or maybe was there other flags just physically or kind of in the industry that you were like, all right, I, I need to make this change or pivot in order to, you know, prolong this. Cause I think too, uh, I'm just pulling different things that I've seen over, over the years. Like you were like, yeah. Hey, we don't do a ton of workshops. We love shooting weddings. Like that's our, you know, that's, we're not going to invent a belt. Like you just said, like, we're going to do this, you know, as long as we can. Yeah. You know, it's, it's kind of a surreal point. Um, now because you know, now at this point I do feel experience. I do feel, you know, something where I can look back and I can see, um, you know, stages and transitions and life and work and, 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 um, which, is, which in the wedding photography world, you know, makes you like a, a great, great grandfather. Um, because, you know, there, the things have changed so quickly, so fast, so often that, um, you can, you can barely see the, the background perspective anymore. Um, you know, and the story where it's surreal is that, like, you know, 
now I feel in ways, you know, maybe um, qualified to answer this question, but, you know, people were, um, you know, have been asking me that for like 10 years when I was not, uh, you know, people were asking me like, you know, coming to me as a, as a bash is like, give me, you know, the lessons from all your experience. And I'm like, I don't have that much experience. Um, but yeah, you know, but that's kind of how it works. You know, people who've been in wedding photography know that like you could literally have shot one wedding and you will start to get emails for, you know, like, Oh, can I be your second shooter? Can I be your, can I be your assistant? Give me, give me all your expertise. Um, and you know, people were, were asking me, uh, you know, I think to, to, to do workshops, um, when I'd been full time for, for maybe six months, <laughs> you know, I'm like what other, I'm, I'm sure, you know, now of course, like these are things like, it seems like the world is like that where it's like, you know, okay. I, I you know, everyone's a YouTube influencer creating content or whatever, all that, all that means. Um, but it's, but having like seen the way the world used to work where, um, having been, you know, been doing your job for 12 years, man, like, yeah, you know, a lot of stuff, but it's not, nothing special. <laughs> you know, there's not a special amount of time to do one thing. Um, but now it is. Um, and so, um, yeah, it, it, it's just, you know, it's amazing to look back. I mean, you, you say a name like, like Tony Hoffer and Tony, you know, Tony is now feeling it. And but I still remember when Tony was, you know, new and, and fresh and exciting. I was like, I was, I was like oh, you know, um, like excited just to like learn you know, the, the, the basic stuff. And of course, you know, I remember when I was and it wasn't that long because, you know, um, when, when I, I re- it was not long ago that I was young and fresh faced and I was looking to people like Susan and Cliff and, you know, and, and so it feels like Susan's even a generation ahead of me, but she was only a couple of years, <laughs> you know, ahead. Like, you know, I used, I was in that same experience, like, like lay it on me, Susan, you know, show me how to do all this stuff. And, you know, when she was, I've been shooting for you know a few years. Um, and so, but I've always admired people like Cliff who, um, because, you know, he has been doing it uh, longer and, and had done what we're trying to do now, which is to basically, like, keep it going. Um, and so, and to say, like, okay, you have all these opportunities to do these other things, um, but you still are shooting a lot of weddings. You're, you're also, there's a part of you that's, like, keeping your head down and just, and just doing it. Um, and I've, I've always, from the start, really admired that longevity because to me like if you if it ends up that you have longevity not only have you um succeeded through a lot of hard times because we always have hard times we all we all have things in our life and business and and um you know you've weathered all you know all the changes in the industry um but it also meant that like either you were just very stubborn or you you found the right path in the first place um that that you can continue on um and so you always want to look to the people who have lasted um, because that's the goal, right? Like, you know, either if your goal, either you have a specific exit strategy, you know, like, okay, my goal is to like, what I really want to do is sell stuff. And, and so my goal is to kind of get famous and then sell things or, or like just, you know, make a bunch, make some money and I don't know, invest it in Bitcoin or something. Like you either need, you know, some kind of, um, exit strategy, or if you don't have one, you're, you, then what you need is a plan to do this for the long haul. Um, and, and, you know, relatively few people have that. And, and I see that now, but I also, I was lucky enough that I saw that when I was new, um, you know, when I'd done this only for a couple of years and you would, and absolutely, you know, I was like, no photographers are thinking about retirement. Uh, like, no photographers are thinking about like, what are they going to do when they're sixty? Um, like, like one, literally one person. You would ask a room of photographers, and in a conference room, literally like one percent often would would be saving for retirement. Would be, um, you know, just even just thinking ahead. Um, and so, so now we're at a stage where. You know, some of that, some of that stuff um, certainly paid off. But at least um, the the thought that I put in early um, at least helped us weather some really, really, really super significant uh, problems <laughs> that we had. You know, including things like 
um, you know, five years ago now or six, um, our, uh, my accountant one day, like he, he was in the middle of this, um, major transition of our, of what our business was as an entity and in the middle of it. He's like, I just want to let you know, I'm going on vacation, uh, to Spain. And I was like, okay, cool. You know, I'll see you when you come back. He never came back. <laughs> he literally, like, literally never came literally just like never came back left all of his um left mine and every other client stuff just open on his desk um for some like kid to handle and the the number of cascading uh problems that that caused uh you know you know could be an, uh, an episode on its own but i was you know i was only able to um to weather that and, and not really have it affect the core of my business because when everything was working, I was like, okay, well, what I need to do is, is like, it's not, okay, we have a little money coming in, coming in. Let's not spend that all. Let's like actually, you know, save and invest this and maybe not live off retainers like 90 plus percent of, uh, wedding photographers do. Like maybe try and, you know, live under me and save a little bit. Um, and, you know, and not, not only is that handy for retirement, but it's really handy when, when stuff hits you in the face. Um, and you know, it's kind of been a, you know, we've, we've been around long enough that, you know, like, like we say with, you know, memory cards, it's like, if you, if you haven't had a memory card fail, just shoot more. Um, you know, it'll happen. <laughs> uh, you know, the same thing, if you haven't had like a major crisis in your life and your business, um, that like shakes you to your core, just, you know, that means you gotta, you gotta do it some more. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta work more because it's going to happen. Um, you know, uh, eventually the probability of it reaches one. Uh, and so, you, and you want to be able to, to weather that and keep going. And we've, we've had more than our share, uh, actually. And, and, um, th- I'm very proud that like we're not only here and able to get through it, but like I said, we're, you know, we're still like excited to move forward. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, you know, I like, I'm at this stage where where I can look back and I can realize like, oh yeah, from a, from a certain perspective, um, you know, I'm from a, like, if you look at it from a certain perspective and not knowing a lot about us and just seeing things like, oh, okay, you know, oh, that was stuff from the past. That was a kid when I first heard about the Brenheiser method or something. And whereas, you know, from, from our perspective, it's like, oh, we're still, we're still young in a lot of ways. Um, we don't, even if in our personal life, we live like old people um, because we have a, we have a baby and, you know, I spent New Year's just like asleep on my bed with him in my arms. And like, we're not, we're not party animals anymore. Um, but, you know, we're, you know, we still have like a lot of energy and vitality and there's, there's a lot of things that we're, we're like, 2019 is actually going to be a year of launching um, some new initiatives that we're like super duper duper excited about. Um, and even in 2018, even, even bogged down by, um, you know, having a, a newborn and, and all of this. Um, I, you know, I did a major rework of my workshops. Uh, we just didn't have time to, to give more than a couple of them, but, uh, the people who, um, like I, I felt better about them than I had in a long time. Um, I just felt like things had been smoother. Um, and, you know, we've developed some, some lectures, which, which speak to a lot of these things that, um, that you go through once you've been in it for a long time and you, you've been through the experiences of, you've inhabited the experiences of the people you're shooting for, um, to be able not only to sympathize with our clients because we've um, been married, and you know, and I really recommend if you want to be a wedding photographer, just, just get married. Just go, plan a wedding, even if it's just like to you know um, get a green card somewhere. I don't know, like like have a person, you know, take another wedding photographer, marry them. Just you know, spend that, you know, take the, your fifty thousand dollars or whatever. Just like plan, go through it, you know. Have a practice wedding because um, it's yeah, I'm facetious, but it, you really do learn so much um about the things that they're facing the way that they're feeling the way that um they are going into the wedding but you know and then of course the way that they will um uh experience their photos afterward and you know our our experience 
uh, was basically like, we knew there was a lot of stuff wrong with the wedding industry, but you know, basically everything is wrong. (laughs) (laughs) And, you know, um, basically, uh, the things that we, uh, we often focus on the things that are completely not important, um, or way less important than, than we think they are. And we, but we totally miss and nobody talks about so many of the things that, that are important. Um, you know, and, and which go, good wedding photographers and wedding photographers have been around for a long time, um, have learned to do, but don't really talk about, you know, things like, trying to to capture as many wedding guests as possible, whether or not the photos of them are, are super interesting, but because like when you see what you're shooting for your wedding clients and, and that's what they're interested in. You know, we can look at uh, photos from, from our weddings, which is captured by like a who's who of like the best photographers in the world. Um, And, you know, you see like as a photographer, you focus on the amazing thing that's happening in the foreground as the people whose wedding it is, um, we see that, but we equally see random stuff that's happening in the background. And it's like, oh, why, why is my, well, that's cool. Why is my client talking to my cousin? They have a good time. Like, oh, oh it's really not oh, good. My mom got to eat. I can see that in the background. And like, like all the stuff that we even think of as clutter is actually not clutter when it's people you know and love enough to um, spend all this money and effort to, to invite to your wedding. Right. Um, yeah. and so, and like, and these are things that are critically important. There's so much, there's a lot of a disconnect between clients, especially again, um, the, the people we are really interested in, which is the, the people who have been married, who, um, now have their photos and are, have the rest of their life to, to deal with their photos, to, to encounter them. Um, and there's a lot of disconnect between that and the wedding industry. And so there's always a lot of people confused with like, man, I really kicked ass and everyone um, is really loving my photos and I want to hear this award for it, but my clients have a, a random cell phone shot that somebody took up as their Facebook profile. I'm like, what's wrong with them? And, you know, both things can be true. Like from a certain perspective, you know, maybe you really did kick ass, um, but it might not be an irrational decision on their part, um, you know, to have some like what you perceive as a, as a crappy iPhone photo um, for whatever reason that that worked better for them. And so you need to like unpack that. And it doesn't mean anything about you being good or bad um, as a photographer. Uh, it just means uh, there's, there's uh, work left to do to understand people's real motivations and the things that will drive, it will drive them, um, which is hard because again, when they come to you as clients, they don't even know. They don't know. Yeah how they're thinking, who, who they will be when they look back at their photos. Um, and so, so in a way, uh, as somebody who's, you know, who's experienced, you have to kind of intuit even just the like, um, like, Hey, you know, most likely these things are going to be, here's the stuff that is going to surprise you about what's important, um, a month after the wedding. And here's the thing that's going to surprise you about what's important 10 years after the wedding. Um, one of the best things now about having shot weddings for more than 10 years, um, is, is what's awesome is I get people, I, I, I even get, I got an album order, um, from a 10 year anniversary, you know, so we're working on an album for 2008, which is kind of, you know, it's both, both cool and like, oh my God, you know, going back to you know, 2008 images. Um, if you, if you feel like you haven't, um, uh, improved, uh, you know, if you feel like you're stuck in a rut, just go back to, to old photos. Um, because, you know, of course, it's, it's, in a way, it's harder to see improvement when you're just looking at portfolio images because, like, honestly, um, you know, and somebody who, who just picked up a camera for the first time can luck into, you know, you can shoot a 12 hour day and can luck into a great photo or two and can make mm-hmm. that into their portfolio, uh, you know, and, and, you know, continues down the line like a blog set. But when you're looking at a whole set, and you're looking at something from 10 years ago, you're going to see a lot of stuff that you're like, Ooh, Oh yeah, I've gotten a lot better. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, um, and, you know, and, and of course like Lightroom 2008 and all of its issues and things like that. So, um, right, right. so there's issues with that, but it's also, it's, it's really, uh, it's awesome to see. It's wonderful. Um, my, 
my Instagram feed, um, between the feed itself and the way that it does its algorithm. And this is the only time I will ever talk about algorithms in a positive light because I've been thinking a lot about how algorithms are the devil in terms of when you are the person who is, um, trying to put things out there and, and stay, you know, relevant. It's, uh, it's absolutely nightmare inducing to feel like you will be punished if you take a day off, um, not only for that day, but for the thing that you put up the next day. Um, it's like such a source of constant anxiety for myself and a lot of other people. Um, but, but on the receiving end, um, I do love that my, my Instagram algorithm basically shows me 90% of, uh, clients and their children. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I open up and just everything is at the top and just cute little babies of people who, uh, weddings I photographed. And it's, and it's awesome, you know, not just because I love and live the world of babies now, but because it shows that, that what I did was to tell the, um, the, the inflection point, uh, major transition point, in this, this really important ongoing story. And, and now to, to see an age where, um, you know, these people with, with these kids who, who, you know, I've, I've done, I've done weddings. I did a wedding for, um, a sibling of a, of a, um, previous client where the previous client's daughter, who, you know, was born after the wedding, um, was a flower girl. You know, it's not just a baby, but like, uh, is a, um, was, was running around and, and talking flowers and, and, um, you know, to me, that, that's awesome. And, and I've always said, like, I really feel like I'm a success when I shoot a wedding for somebody who had been a flower girl. And, mm. You know, like a real, not like a, not like a 22 year old flower girl, but like when, <laughs> when, um, you know, I, I, you know, shot them as a seven year old and, and then I shoot their wedding. Um, then I will, that, that's the point where I'll feel like I've been a success. Um, totally. Totally. I think that's um for you. It's one of the things where I'm learning this now, you know, just being in, I, I would say I'm like mid range right now being in the industry. And one of the things that I see online is we've seen these trends, you know, so let's say, you know, a few years ago and you, you probably know ones even more where a few, you know, a few years ago and it's still popular, you know, this kind of light and airy, this angelic look. And then the, the new trend now is like this adventure. Let's go sprinting through the water. And I, and I love it. And it's great. Uh, and it's still kind of dark and moody and everything is serious. And, you know, and yeah. the thing between those two and, and not, not that any of those aren't real, but I think what you're tapping into and something I'm realizing now as well is that, you know, these emotions and humans, at least until we turn into robots, uh, aren't changing. Right. And, you know, that's the kind of thing between your 10th wedding in 2008 and and now, you know, 2019 as we're recording this is like, you know, the client still feels that way, hopefully, or maybe, you know, like a fire or a wine or something like that, that emotion has now matured. And if we, you, know, I always say like, for us, it's like, we're shooting in advance. We're kind of like, listen, this mm -hmm. photo is going to matter to you. You know, like you said earlier, it's, it's going to matter so much more as we get further on. And, and I think you and I, we've, we heard you speak at workshop and something we talked about was kind of the morbid Hey, this person passed away. Do you have any more photos of them, yeah. or you know, even something out of focus? And that's one of those things that I don't think when we're starting out, or at least as a photographer, we're thinking about like how cool is this photo that I can take. But if you're like, why does this photo matter so much? You know, that can bridge a, a larger gap for us. And uh, you know, I think that's a good step for any photographer to think about is like, you know, what is the emotion and how will this affect them? in the long term. So I, I really appreciate that. I want to ask you one thing to make sure that you get out of here on time is, uh, is there a mistake or a decision you made where you wish you had done something else, even just a little one, now that you've been in the industry for a long time, is there something you wish you had pivoted a little bit differently earlier or said, Hey, if I had just, you know, for, I didn't know for a lot of photographers now, it's like, Hey, if I just watched Netflix less, I could be able to you know, edit quicker <laughs> or whatever. But is there something yeah. that you saw and you and now you're looking back and you're like, Oh, I wish we had done that. It, maybe that's retirement. You know, I know a lot of photographers finally yeah. are like, Oh, what's a SEP? What's a Roth IRA? Uh, and we're going to do an episode on that. But what was, if there was anything like that for you, is there one of those things? <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, the very obvious one, uh, which I've already alluded to, is like, if you're going to start a business, like, definitely get a good business accountant. <laughs> because 
Holy cow! Um, but uh, you know, like absolutely, like that should be when it, when once you at least when you go full time, um, you know, do it do it right, do it real. Don't end up in in trouble later because you know these things are, um, you know, for example, you know things like just like losing uh, a hard drive or not, like it's it's un when you do run into that trouble, it's just more than you can possibly imagine. Um, so, and it's very simple to, to take care of um, and, and relatively cheap in the beginning uh, to take care of. Um, and, if, and again, like everything in the business is probably a lot of stuff that you're not good at because you started out as an artist and you, you're probably not great at business like everybody else. No problem. Um, no, you know, none of us are. Get, just get somebody who is um, to, to do the stuff that you're not good at. Um, and, you know, the, the more and the sooner that you do that, uh, the better. Uh, and so... Um, so that's obvious. I, you know, I think, um, you know, again, it's, it's, uh, for us, it's always about maintaining, it, it's about, you know, like keeping your head up. Um, you know, the, the, <laughs> the thing for us, you know, again, there's, there's really, uh, there's, there's kind of two major phases in, in my business life. And, and one would be like up until about 2013 when I was really, really focused on the, on the other, uh, on the outward side and, um, and it worked, a lot of stuff worked really well. Um, and, uh, but you know, there's, there's also like pieces just of myself and of uh, the ways in which I, you know, interacted with, with clients and with, and also with just with everyone, um, that was missing. And so really like kind of the last five years has, has been something again, relatively, relatively internal um for ways that, that are helpful and important to us and but also because like there's a lot of stuff that's just been going on that i you know i just don't like and i realized just this week how much how much of the things that i don't like about um like the modern world that we're actually they're not just human nature but we're actually like deliberate decisions by people at Facebook. <laughs> um, and, um, you know, of course, like in this industry, like we are, it doesn't matter how you feel about Facebook and its incarnations today because you're kind of trapped in it. You know, you, know, you hear people go like, oh, I don't like Facebook. I'm going to stick to Instagram. <laughs> um, and, you know, which is owned by Facebook. Um, and so, so, but being that internal, um, you do have to, you know, we're realizing now, like you have to keep your head up, you know, we're, we're happier, we're deeper, we're, we're producing things that we feel better about than ever. Um, but you know, we're realizing like, okay, if we want to get that message out there, if we think that we're saying something important, not only for our clients, but for people that we want people to hear, um, which we, which we do think so, so we feel better about our like lectures and workshops than we ever had. Um, but you know, we're like, okay, well, we haven't, we, when you haven't played the game in five years when you've, uh, we actually let, I mean, I, you know, I let my website be broken, straight up broken, almost impossible. To, I don't know if you've tried to visit my website, in, uh, like my old one, uh, since 2013, but it was often just plain broken for five years. Um, <laughs> and yes, that does. Um, do things, <laughs> you know, that does take a toll. Um, so, uh, yeah, so we're, we're kind of retrenching and, and, of course, and then, and then like, it's not all our fault. Like, you know, it, the website just a few weeks ago completely went offline. We lost, you know, all that SEO that we built up, you know, over the years. And, and so now we're, it's like, we're, we're starting fresh and it's, it's new, it's exciting. So even though in a way we have so much to look back on, um, we still feel so, you know, like young and vital enough that like in a way it's exciting to be starting over. Um, it's also deeply annoying. Um, so you, you always, it's, it's sometimes an exhausting balancing act, but that wedding photography is always about balance because what you're, um, in your business, but also when you're shooting, um, you have, all of these competing, you're not just producing one photo. You're not, you're, you have a set of things, of tasks to, to do and to achieve, um, that are often directly competing with each other, um, that are impossible to do perfectly. Um, and, you know, again, doing one thing means not doing another. I mean, in, in ways like no matter who you are, it is important. To, there are many times where it will be important and absolutely your job to take a photo that is very mediocre um, because otherwise you create this point of real tension. You know, the, the, um, 
the space in the market for photographers who will say like, no, I absolutely will never take a table photo is very small. You know, it's that, it's that 5% of the market. So either you can really work, uh, you know, to, um, to try and occupy that space with people who are like, oh, I'm just an artist or I'm just a photojournalist. Or, you know, these things, they're going to be part of it. And you're going to say, well, like, okay, well, if I'm going to take a table photo, if, like, if this is going to be part of my job, um, well, maybe at least I can, like, learn to, to do it a little bit better. And um, doing it better, you know, in a lot of these photos doesn't mean making it not a mediocre photo. Like, it's not about taking a table photo that you're going to submit to fearless. Um, but it's about, like, okay, if really the problem with it is um, it takes too long and it's annoying, to, you know, to set up, like, how do I make it? take less time? How do I make it less annoying for myself, for clients, for, for the people in the photo? Like, how do I get better even at these, um, these little tasks that don't feel like the things that we're talking about, table photos, family photos, um, just, you know, getting a variety of, you know, people in, in, uh, in the full set. Um, like, and then you'll find out that there's, there is something energizing about getting better at doing things. Um, you know, even if the, that task itself is not the most amazing thing in the world. And that's where a lot of people kind of hit a wall as they go on is, you know, in the basic task of being a photographer, um, there's so much energy in the beginning when like every day, every wedding, you're getting better and better. And then of course, like you don't, you know, like your, your 900th wedding versus your 901st wedding, you probably weren't a radically better photographer. Um, but by finding, by, by delving deeper and finding these new things to focus on, um, it, it does allow you to continue that sense of progress, which is really for the type of personalities that, that tend to be driven into this, um, is something that is, uh, crucial to longevity. I love that, man. That's awesome. Can you, uh, can you give us a little hint of how you're going to make 2019 better for you and, uh, Tatiana mm -hmm. and I guess your family? Yeah, well, I you know I think again uh, one of the things that we are um, really excited uh, and focused on is um, expanding a little bit into uh, family documentary work um, for for a few reasons. First of all, it's something that is so personal and important to our own lives. Um, secondly, uh, again, Tatiana is actually like I think the, just the biggest um, unsung you know secret weapon in. Um, in photography, in wedding photography, um, because she's so good. <laughs> and like, in a way it taught me to like, kind of get over my, it was another thing that taught me to get over myself because I was like, you know, here's this person who's like literally never, like barely had a website at all when I met her. And she was just so good and, and had clients and all the clients were so happy. And I was like, but who are you? No, you know, you, you never, uh, never talk about yourself, but, um, but it speaks to her strength so well. I mean, she's, she's better than I am at, at family documentary work and, and she's amazing. Um, and, and it, and it really, really speaks to the things that are important to her. And so, and, and then again, it gives us a new area to focus on and grow and get better at, not just the, the photography, but like, we you know, we're learning every day about the, you know, the business end of it and, and how that can work and interface, like not, not just like the, the, the money making, but, um, you know, how do you provide uh, the, the best kind of service and the best kind of experience to the kind of clients that we, um, you know, tend to work with um, in, in ways, you know, that kind, that thing of what business is, is part of their way of experiencing their photos. Um, it does color and affect um, what these photos mean to them is, is all of their interactions with you. Um, and so, so that's all like that. That's the thing that we're most excited about. Um, and, and I also just, I want to get back. Uh, I'm trying to carve out room maybe as the, as the spring progresses in the next few months to, to, to just start playing again, <laughs> um, you know, and, and yeah. because we've now, we've now that we've had these five years where we've, we've dug so deep and, and, and gotten entrenched, like if it's time to bounce back a little bit and just, um, as we're taking this one path that is taking us even deeper into the family, into these real experiences, I also want to just, just get back and just be like, okay, you know, what, what can I do with, you know, this piece of equipment, you know, what, what, um, like, you know, something new and, and take that kind of innovation and freshness because you don't want, you, you, you don't want to just do the same thing. Um, the, the real, 
the real um, problem sometimes is when you find something that works too well. <laughs> is when you find, you find like, mm-hmm. okay, in this situation, if I do these things, it's going to work. Um, because then there is, um, there is temptation to always do that, especially when you're under the major time uh, and other constraints of wedding photography. And, and it happens to everyone, you know, and, and um, you're in your basic work, ev- everyone you know, whatever they do, everyone gets locked into what they do. Um, whether that is, I'm going to take you up to a, to a mountaintop and, and, uh, and I know the, I know the best mountaintop and I know like people, they're not finding a new mountain every time, you know, they're, um, like, I, like I know how to do this now, uh, you know, I've done this, you know, 50 times and, and boom, boom, boom. Um, or, you know, or I know how to shoot light and airy and, you know, I'll, I'll give you a, a contact and I'll pull the two stops, da, da, da. Um, or, or, you know, uh, I know how to, to do this really, um, crazy silhouette or, you know, intricate lighting thing. And I know how to shoot through prisms and, and whatever it is. Like it's all, you, you do get locked into it unless you, you get locked into it, not because it's a bad thing. You get locked into it because it works and because your clients want that. Um, you could, you could literally take the same shot your entire career and make it work because everyone in front of your camera is a different person and, and, you know, and they want that and, and, and people do that. But for me and, and for, you know, just trying to, to stay just interested and, and vital on, on the, the artistry side, it's about saying like, okay, you like, how, how can I 10% of the time or, or 5% of the time just, just break out and just try something uh, just completely different just to play around um, because the, the act itself may not is not nearly as important as like diving deep and connecting with clients and things like that but there there is there is an importance to play and to to staying just interested and and being part of the conversation so so those are those are all the tracks that i'm i'm thinking about as we you know in ways are are standing at this um business with a lot of history and in ways are standing um, in, in a business that is new and starting and, and changing and, and that feels both, we feel both very experienced and very fresh, um, which I think is uh, also a um, metaphor for parenthood where um, you, some days you, some point in every day, you feel like you are 900 years old because you haven't slept in a year and <laughs> you, and everything is aching. And, and some days you, and at some points in every day, you also are a one year old because you are singing and playing and jumping and, and like having a great time. Um, and so that is, yeah, for us, of course, everything comes back to parenthood because it's what we do. Um, yeah. But yeah, we're, it's a very present, it's, it's uh, an it's exciting a- time. Yeah, it's like it's in your mind at this moment and you can't really take your mind off it for at least the next 17 years. And, you know, that's if you only have Gavin and yeah, you're you guys are stuck. Um, I love that. I love that last line. Just um, there's always room for innovation, you know, even if it's only 5%, if you can bring it in just to for your own mental sanity as an as an artist, if that's like your priority. And um, I love that, man. Ryan, so good to talk to you, man. And I know you have to run. Where is the best place for people to go uh, to non-broken websites and to see your your fun Instagram? And uh, what's uh, what's the best place to f- reach out to you? Yeah, well, it's all, uh, again, one of the things we're super excited about now is this year we have a website that works. Uh, we're going to be uh, building on it. Uh, Thebrenizers.com. We're actually working on a, uh, we're finishing up a really, really exciting and awesome wedding we did in Croatia. Um, you know, uh, in the next couple of days. And so we want to get that up as soon as possible. Um, so we're going to be posting more work. I want to actually, the more that I can push things back to my website and get less out of the control of Facebook, the better. So, so yeah, definitely yeah. check out the things that are happening at brandizers.com and, you know, uh, and our Instagram as well. Um, so I'll see what all these, one of the other things in this year where, where I feel like an, an old person, I've, I've always felt like an old person regarding Instagram, even, you know, uh, six years ago, or whatever. I was like, what, you know, what is this, you kids? And so now getting into like, you know, how do we better use stories and things like that is going to be our, our social media learning curve of the year. So, um, but yeah, so the brennizers.com and, and our Instagram are the, are the major the major inflection points this year um and it will it will all be under you'll be able to find it all at the 
Awesome, man. Thanks so much. So one of the fun things that I love about Ryan is when I first started my wedding photography business and kind of decided that I was going to pursue this um, at least as much as I could, one of the things that I thought about was grouping up my favorite photographers in kind of this little box, if you will, and saying, let's try to not aim for one single person, but let's also not aim for a hundred people and say, hey, I want to be like all these 50 photographers that I love or a hundred people. I picked kind of five or four, five, four, five, or six, and uh, depending on which day you ask me. And Ryan was in that group of people that I said, all right, I, I don't know if I want everything that Ryan has. And, and of course, too, when you're looking on the outside, you don't know everything. I always tell everybody that businesses are icebergs, and so we only see the top 10%. But where Ryan was showing was something that I wanted, and it was just both creativity and connection with clients. And again, yeah, he's on this episode because he's been in the business for so long, and I think it's one of those things that we have to consider as we're listening to this and maybe it's our first six months or it's our first year or we just went full time and we have to, it's it's really hard to think long term when you have emails now and you have edits you need to do now, but thinking long term is going to just help ease that pain hopefully over time. And so Ryan's one of those people I'm so glad that he was able to come on. So thank you so much for listening to this episode. One favor for you guys, I would love if you guys gave us a review on iTunes, five stars. If it's not five stars, you can just leave it blank and uh, not leave that review. That'd be great. Thanks. Um, <laughs> but if you want to leave a five-star review on iTunes, it really helps the show. Thank you so much, guys. Keep being awesome.